now it started recording you can uh, see we will be having maximum torque at a particular uh, ratio that is for the chemically correct uh, air fuel ratio i will be able to deliver uh, what to say i can able to convert my chemical energy efficiently into heat energy and heat energy into mechanical energy so i will be getting a maximum power uh, in that uh, region okay and you can see when i am going for a lean mixture that is when i am going for uh, excess air what happens my carbon monoxide and hydrocarbon will be decreasing carbon monoxide will be decreasing always that is what does it mean no i am adding oxygen so co is converting it into co2 when i am increasing the air fuel ratio beyond the limit my co will be converted into co2 so co emission will be reducing drastically okay for hydrocarbon up to a particular instant my emissions will be reduced hydrocarbon c will be converted into co2 and h will be converted into water vapor due to excess oxygen after a particular limit what will happen i can't uh, undergo combustion the mixture will be too lean okay so what happens uh, my hydrocarbon will be unburnt okay so the emissions will be increasing whereas you see nox nox is a function of temperature you have to remember this uh, definition the definition or uh, inference that is uh, my nox emission oxides of nitrogen okay nox means oxides of nitrogen okay no2 and no what happens uh, it depends upon temperature okay it depends upon temperature so whenever high temperature is prevailing in the combustion chamber what i will be uh, having is nox emission will be more you can see from rich mixture rich mixture nox emission will increase actually in combustion chamber when maximum temperature will be uh, reached you know uh, uh, in the, the mixture is lean when the mixture is lean we will be getting what maximum temperature okay so what happens uh, i will be getting uh, nox emission more in that uh, range okay so these are the performance variable you can see torque variation nox variation so this i have to control in my ecm that is i have to get the input uh, what are the emission how i am going to regulate this emissions the, okay so these are the parameters i have to consider for uh, electronic engine management okay so you can see our uh, variation of torque brake power everything i have been uh, given why this curve has been plotted using fixed spark timing and constant engine speed this one alone you have to refer this curve is plotted for fixed spark timing and constant engine speed okay this is a fuel metering control why fuel metering control means i am regulating the air fuel ratio and i am seeing the variation okay i am seeing the variation emissions performance okay and uh, there is a another parameter called uh, equivalence ratio lambda okay lambda is nothing but air fuel ratio to air fuel stoichiometric air fuel ratio i will be under, uh, i will be explaining this term see there are two terms are there lambda and uh, phi okay i am typing here so that you will be able to see see there is a term if i am taking a or f a bar f means air fuel ratio so actual air fuel ratio divided by stoichiometric stoichiometric means correct air fuel ratio if it is like this it means what a equivalence ratio it will be called as lambda i am not typing uh, i am typing lambda because uh, it will take time to take this uh, symbol okay so actual air fuel ratio to stoichiometric air fuel ratio it will be lambda if i am going on fuel basis that is instead of a by f i will be going by f by a so this one is based on a by f a by f means 
uh, numerator will be having mass of air and denominator will be having mass of fuel okay same thing if i am going for f by a f by a that is a difference okay a by f and uh, f by a we are having difference okay so see a by f by a this will be called as phi that is a equivalence ratio okay so this is known as equivalence ratio both are called as equivalence ratio but uh, simple if it is based on uh, a by f it is called lambda if it is f by f it will be called uh, phi okay so see now it is lambda lambda is for a by f a by f stoichiometric so when it is equal to 1 then it is termed as stoichiometric ratio that is a uh, actual air fuel ratio 14. Uh, is to 1 and uh, stoichiometric also 14. Point, 14.7 so denominator and uh, numerator same value okay 14.7 uh, so what will happen my lambda value will be 1 that is what uh chemically correct mixture okay so uh, we can't operate uh, lambda as 1 practically okay the lambda can be greater than 1 lambda can be less than 1 now you see in uh, dinam uh, okay now you see lambda is air fuel ratio air fuel stoichiometric okay so stoichiometric uh, lambda less than 1 let us see what is what will happen lambda less than 1 see this a by f a by f when lambda is less than 1 it means what it will be a rich mixture okay that is my r is less because we are uh, taking parameter a by f okay so you have to understand carefully when lambda is less than 1 it is called rich mixture when lambda is greater than 1 it will be called uh, lean mixture similarly for phi phi is f by a numerator f by a denominator also f by a the, the things will be uh, inversed when phi is greater than 1 it will be a rich mixture and phi is less than 1 lean mixture you understand the difference this is very very important for uh, ic engine that is for lambda less than less than 1 i will uh, call it as what rich okay whereas greater than 1 i will call it as lean because in numerator we are having air so greater than 1 means air is more when air is more it is a lean mixture when it is less than 1 it will be a rich mixture f is more okay so you have to understand this uh, concept similarly for equivalence ratio that is phi phi symbol will be what type it will be like a o with a slash okay it is a uh, less than 1 it will be a uh, lean mixture since uh, numerator is f less than 1 means r is more okay so less than 1 it is a lean mixture greater than 1 numerator f is there so it is a rich mixture so always you have to remember this there is a term called equivalence ratio based on a by f or based on f by a so you understand this concept it may be uh, coming for you since you are automobile engineer you should be knowing is equivalence ratio means we will be using the term phi and uh, lambda based on a by f when i am asking you to define uh, equivalence ratio you should not tell a by f it is f by a divided by f by a stoichiometric okay 
next uh, we are going to see influence of spark timing previously we have seen the influence of air fuel mixture uh, air fuel ratio now we are going to see influence of spark timing okay so spark timing on what are the parameter that is we are going to see the other uh, parameter what we have seen last bsf emissions fuel consumption and uh, torque mbt means maximum brake torque okay so now you can see that is a spark timing will be before tdc actually before tdc the ideal situation will be at tdc but uh, for getting a better power will be going uh, before tdc say 10 degree before uh, tdc for some cases i will retard that is after tdc 10 degree after tdc that is called as retardation okay but the uh, most of the cases i will be advancing it advance when i am going to advance the spark timing i will be having <laughs> some advantage and some disadvantage but all the times i can't uh, go for uh, more advancement there is a limit is there okay because if i am uh, advancing too much now uh, knocking me come okay so you can uh, see and uh, emissions knocks also will uh, increase when you are uh, studying detailly in uh, ic engines that is automotive engines you will be knowing it better okay so now see when i am going to advance why the people are joining very late pranay sainath anyone wants to join no you unmute the call and inform me so that i can allow them i am uh, getting a one uh, beep sound here so based on that only uh, i am allowing them okay so you can uh, see how the spark timing is going to influence the emissions this is a university question they may ask uh, how the parameters can be controlled so you have to be uh, explaining this okay so see when i am going for advance advance means what happen i will be producing the power earlier producing the power earlier means temperature will be more so what happen when advances increases my knock emission also will increase okay and also what will happen my hydrocarbon emission also will get increase reason is when i am going to advance i'll i am i'll be getting the peak pressure uh, before itself okay so what will happen peak pressure will be obtained uh, before after some time uh, some amount of uh, fuel will not have the will not have that uh, pressure as well as temperature to undergo the combustion so what will happen there will be a unburnt uh, hydrocarbon it means what no uh, i am advancing the spark timing so what happens uh, my combustion will be started earlier and uh, after some time i the, the hydrocarbon will not be having sufficient temperature it will be coming from uh, say other uh, blow out uh, region the blow by regions okay blow by regions okay so what happens uh, hydrocarbon emissions may increase okay so these are the reasons and you can see uh, the brake specific fuel consumption okay so how it uh, varies and uh, there is uh, tark no for up to up to a particular extent my power can be increased beyond that particular range uh, i can't uh, achieve the power increase okay that is i can go to advance up to a particular limit only that is already i told you the pressure will not be sufficient that is uh, for expansion stroke after a particular limit my power will uh, will be reduced my power value torque value will be reduced i will be getting a maximum power you know at, on, at at a particular instant of advance only okay now see egr what is egr no to control uh, knox emission okay knox means uh, it depends upon uh, temperature uh, i am wait pandra no ellathin join pandra sir 11 per irukranga See, Knox means 
i have to reduce the temperature then only my knox emission will uh, get uh, reduced so what i am going to do is i am using egr egr is nothing but exhaust gas uh, recirculation so you can see uh, in exhaust manifold some amount of exhaust gas will be taken and it will be sent into inlet manifold so that it will be mixing with uh, fresh charge you can see when i am selling now i will be uh, sending it with the egr cooler that is i will be cooling the exhaust gas and i will be sending why now if it, it is heat at no it will be reducing the volumetric efficiency the amount of charge entering into the cylinder will be getting uh, reduced in order to avoid that i am cooling the exhaust gas and i am sending into the inlet manifold so what happened whatever peak temperature is going to be produced it will be reduced because i am mixing my fresh charge with a parasite uh, gas it can be termed as a parasite parasite means it will be absorbing the energy so what happen my uh, temperature will get uh, reduced so that uh, nox emissions will be reduced so this is a logic simple diagram only but uh, for controlling this egr we need a parameter how much quantity of egr should be circulated for example you will be able to take 10 to 30% if you are taking beyond that what will happen i can't uh, ignite the air fuel mixture that is a uh, combustion will not uh, start up to a particular limit only i have to take egr and depending upon my nox okay my nox emission is so and so means so this required quantity of egr can be recirculated so this will be determined by a control unit so this is known as egr control so simply as a elementary point of view regarding egr i have explained okay this will be sufficient for examination point of view but designing a egr and how to operate egr valve and everything if you are interested you can uh, go further also but not for this course for automotive engines okay so with this uh, first unit is over now i am going to start second unit if you are having any doubts you can ask and uh, you intimate me whether i can start second unit now any issues i have shared all notes okay go through the notes i am referring that notes only since the time constraint we'll be uh, going with the uh, basic requirement so it is okay shall we start second unit anyone can unmute and uh... okay sir okay okay we will start the second unit the second unit no it is uh, fully we are going to see about sensors there is different types of sensor see actually you are studying this paper is what uh, evms that is a uh, vehicle management engine and vehicle management system that is how to manage engine and how to manage uh, vehicle that is electronically So, if you are studying electronically, then you have to study about sensors. Okay, sensors uh, you can see inductive sensors, all effect sensor, hot wire. So, like this, uh, different types of sensors are there. In roughly twenty sensors are there, I think. Okay, so you will be studying that is uh, how the sensors are working. So that is the uh, second unit. Okay, so first of all, I will start with the inductive sensor. inductive means uh, you may know related to magnetic uh, field okay so whenever uh, uh, that is uh, passing a current it will be introduce a magnetic field or with by the magnetic field i will be wearing the magnetic flux that will be introducing a emf okay you might have gone through faraday's law of electromagnetic induction so based on that only uh, this sensor will be working inductive sensor what is the main advantage of this no no touching you remember the word this inductive sensor will uh, detect the objects without uh, touching okay so i will be having a induction uh, loop okay induction loop that that is due to the magnetic field i will be having a induction loop the induction loop uh, will be changing according to the material so based on the material the loop will be changed so whenever any metal is uh, detected the signal will be given from this inductive sensor because the inductive sensor uh, the induction loop will be varied that is the magnetic field will be varied and based on that uh, the emf will be introduced okay so 
this is purely dependent on magnetic reluctance sensor what do you mean by magnetic reluctance no how far it is able to uh, adjust with the magnetic that is uh, how far it is magnetic we can cope, cope up with the magnetic permeability we can say it can uh, attract to the magnet okay like that we can say magnetic permeability okay that is the inductive sensor so in that we are going to see magnetic uh, reluctance sensor why not it will be used for measuring uh, position that is when the engine is operating no when engine whether my piston is uh, before tdc or after tdc at what stroke whether it is suction stroke or compression stroke expansion stroke or exhaust stroke so like this uh, we have to know about the engine so based on the crank shaft position we can define my engine position you can see there will be a fixed mark so this mark corresponds to one position say piston is at uh, tdc at uh, start of expansion stroke so that uh, i can judge other position with reference to this uh, mark okay so you can see i am fixing on a reference that is it may be at tdc before expansion uh, stroke so this i am going to define a crank shaft angular position okay so further rotation of the crank shaft further positioning of the engine i can define with respect to this okay so that is the main thing the sensor is going to do and how it is going to do okay so i already have explained you for electronic engine control that is a uh, controlling engine i have to know about uh, engine position okay angular position of engine angular position of the engine will be noted in the flywheel okay you will be seeing uh, you will be drawing valve diagram no where uh, tdc and uh, bdc before tdc after tdc so in the flywheel only i am will be uh, will be knowing that is a uh, angular position of the engine okay so uh, already told you a reference uh, position will be uh, there and uh, by understanding the crank shaft position that is a uh, where the crank shaft is there that is uh, if i am saying a uh, crank shaft is going to complete the compression stroke then i can modify my fuel injection system then i can uh, i can pass a signal to the fuel injector to pass the fuel that is is for a ca engine whereas for s engine i can pass the signal to spark plug to ignite so based on this position i can optimize what is the optimized time for fuel injection optimized time for ignition okay so this is controlled electronically you can see this one i am going to explain you listen carefully then uh, you'll be able to write the answer magnetic magnetic reluctance sensor okay so i have to measure the position that is engine position you can see we are protruding a tap that is a projection in this uh, flywheel okay this one is a crank shaft so at the end of the crank shaft what you will be having a flywheel okay so there are some projections this projections will give a indication uh, the engine is uh, running at uh, which pos position whether it is a tdc or uh, uh, exhaust stroke or expansion stroke so how it is going to work see now i have built a magnetic circuit see i am having a magnet there is north south pole a, a sensing coil a wire it is uh, owned around the magnet okay so this will be uh, sent to the control unit that is a uh, ecu so what will happen a voltage will be introduced in the sensor the voltage will be the indication that is what position my engine is operating okay so how it works see what happens now when this uh, tap is going to come between this uh, pole what happen my uh, magnetic circuit is closed that is a uh, intensity of my magnet magnetic intensity is getting increased okay so in uh, in other words what i can uh, say is uh, between this two i am having a air gap here see here one tab is there here one tab is there when this air gap is going to come between this uh, pole what will happen magnetic circuit will be weak why we are having air air you know the property air is having lower magnetic permeability that is it can't uh, 
increase the magnetic field strength okay so it can't increase the magnetic flux because air is having resistance to the magnetic field okay so what will happen when this one that is uh, when tab is going to come it will increase the magnetic field strength that is it will increase the magnetic uh, flux so what will happen based on that voltage will be introduced in the coil and that voltage output will be sent to the ecu so based on the value of the voltage i can predict what position is engine is going to come whether it is a tdc or bdc okay so this will give a indication for example it's a four cylinder engine means i may have four taps okay if uh, this one is, is going to come here i can understand first uh, cylinder a uh, expansion stroke is going to start okay so now you can see how the sensor voltage is going to vary that is in the y axis i am having voltage and the x axis i am having a position that is a tdc okay so you can see how they are calibrating from the voltage okay whenever this tab is going to start okay it is coming between this uh, pole between north and south pole it is going to come it is a proximity when it is going to start this point is coming okay so when it is going to come what will happen magnetic field will be increasing to the maximum value that is you, know, you start from this point that is uh, before that i will be having air gap okay that is a uh, consider this tab this has been passed away so i am having air gap is here okay the air gap is there the voltage will be low okay so when i am going to move towards this tap what will happen my voltage will be increasing my voltage depends upon what magnetic permeability it since it is a metal say it is a steel when it is going to come into the magnet it will be conducting uh, it will be having magnetic property okay so magnetic flux strength will increase so what happens when i am moving from air gap to this tap my magnetic field strength is getting increased so what will happen voltage will get increased you can see whenever this tip is going to come uh, when the tip is going to start come here before that my voltage will be increasing when the tip reaches this pole it reaches a maximum value and you may ask in this position why voltage is decreasing in that position my magnetic flux is not varying magnetic flux will be rate of change of magnetic field okay so here the magnetic field uh, change rate is more that is from zero i am getting more magnetic field is more the rate of change is more so i am getting higher voltage but here what happens there is no rate of change the magnetic circuit is closed it is a constant the magnetic field is constant okay so there is no variation in flux there is no rate of change of magnetic field so what happened the voltage decreases so i can uh, conclude the voltage depends upon a rate of change of magnetic flux that is like a differentiation from zero magnetic flux is increasing till the tip is coming to the pole after that it is decreasing because there is no change the magnetic field is uh, constant then after that see it is going into the decreasing region here the magnetic flux is uh, getting increasing that is a zero to maximum here the magnetic flux is having a constant value then it is going towards negative that is a, it, uh, it is going in the decreasing manner that is it may go zero also based on air that is air is going to come into the picture okay there is second the rear part this one is front part this tip is coming then it is coming like this then this is moving like this okay after this what will happen air gap is there okay so what happens my voltage is getting decreased then again it will be increasing so at that time that is when my magnetic flux is constant there is no rate of change that will be calibrated as tdc that is a piston has reached tdc so like this only i am going to calibrate okay that is whenever my output voltage is zero i can understand that my piston reaches tdc because the i i will be having a one uh, marking no this tap will be coming exactly between this pole pieces it will not be like this that is a single tip will not be there 
or uh, rear tip will not be there exactly between the pole pieces the magnetic uh, circuit will be completely closed so what happens my output voltage will be zero so i can understand the piston has reached uh, tdc okay so that explanation only i have given when you are going through the notes you will be feeling somewhat uh, complicated go through this uh, wordings i have uh, make it somewhat uh, sim uh, what to say it is a more easy easy readable format okay that is magnetic circuit let me explain this also magnetic circuit means it will be a closed uh, path through a magnetic material that is uh, in that circuit i should have a material that should be able to take the magnetism it should have a property of magnetism okay so my magnetic field can be related to that is how to find the magnetic field parameter can be related to electric circuit that is i can uh, measure voltage and current of electric circuit that can be calibrated to the magnetic field okay that is if i want to know magnetic field intensity i have to measure voltage of electric circuit similarly for magnetic flux it is current okay now i have explained no my voltage of the sensor depends upon my magnetic flux variation and it further depends upon reluctance means you mean uh, the word uh, reluctance no reluctance means resistance when the resistance is more my magnetic strength will be less voltage will be less when resistance is less strength will be more my voltage will be more so i can say the resistance is inversely proportional to magnetic permeability that is how far that is a uh, here you have seen when this tab is going to come magnetic permeability increases resistance decreases so voltage is getting increased that is the meaning here so my voltage increases when this resistance decreases so magnetic permeability increases resistance decreases reluctance uh, other word of uh, resistance decreases strength increases voltage increases so regarding yeah, steel and uh, air you can see magnetic permeability of steel is more so what happened my voltage will be more when steel is going to come into the pole pieces okay so other thing i have already explained so i reluct once when tab is not between gap i am having air so air is having i resistance so reluct once more strength low voltage low okay so remaining things i have explained rate of change of magnetic flux is zero so induced voltage in sensing so go through this i have explained uh, in shiri so this one you have to understand that is a coil voltage wave form no this wave form is shown each time one of the cylinder reaches tdc on power stroke that is a uh, this one is for for each time that is uh, when the engine is running for each time whenever the piston is reaching tdc during power stroke my voltage will be zero okay so i can understand for which cylinder the power stroke is going to start okay so this give a indication of my engine position so based on that i can vary the parameter okay so this one is magnetic reluctance sensor we'll go through this it is a uh, easier only and uh, compared to notes i have made it simpler you go through the slide also you understand then usually you can uh, write okay you should be able to draw this uh, sketch sketch carries uh, half of the part b marks okay now we will see all effect position sensor okay all effect position sensor you go through the sketch i will come within 2 minutes i will have some water and i will come
Okay, shall we start? Someone unmute the call. Shall we start all effect position sensor? Any doubt in uh, magnetic electrons? Shall we start now? Okay, sir. Okay. So now see, all effect position sensor. All effect means you'll be having a element called all element. Okay, what will happen? its uh, voltage will be proportional to the strength of magnetic flux you can see here so its voltage will be uh, proportional to strength of magnetic flux so in that uh, element will be kept uh, between the pole pieces of the magnet okay so what will happen uh, whenever the circuit is uh, closed the same logic only when the circuit is closed I will be having a more voltage introduced in this element. Okay, that will be a, a indication that is a position of the engine. Okay, and uh, same thing. You see, you are having four tab now. One, two, three, four. So it means what? It is a four-cylinder engine. Okay. So we are having a signal processing unit, and this is the input. You see, always sensor output will be going to where a control unit. That is, sensor is a instrument. that will be identifying the magnitude of some parameter and it will be giving that value of the parameter in terms of voltage that voltage will be a indication of that uh, parameter engine position speed or whatever it may be so my electronic control unit what it will be doing based on the signals received from the sensor it may program uh, what to do for this type of action for this type of input Okay, so like that it will decide. So my output of sensor will be always sent to the ECU. Okay, so you can see this one is the all element. Okay, so all element you can see the three things will be perpendicular to each other. That is a magnetic field, voltage, and current. Okay, so for uh, in this course, no. Once you are able to draw this, you'll be able to explain most of the points. even though if you are not able to prepare the answer maybe one or two points you might have skipped okay so you can see magnetic field will be acting like this and current will be acting like this voltage will be acting like this so this three are perpendicular okay so already i have told you my voltage will be reaching a maximum value at tdc that i can understand that piston is going to undergo the expansion stroke okay so this is a crankshaft angle so you can see the voltage variation yeah, i will be having a maximum value a maximum value that is a tdc maximum voltage is uh, reached okay so now you can see this uh, configuration that is a uh, current is going to flow in the all element okay current means what flow of electrons that is uh, how the voltage is getting increased i am going to explain you current means flow of electron you can see the electrons will uh, flow from left to to right okay so electrons is flowing see electrons is flowing so what happened due to the magnetic field magnetic field will impose a strength magnetic field will impose a strength and it will cause this uh, electron flow to move downward that is electrons uh, electron flow the negatively charged you know that is e it will be making uh, to move down by magnetic field okay so positive uh, will be at the top and negative will be at the bottom so we are having a difference positive and negative that will be introducing a voltage 
this voltage will be a indication of engine position so you can see when the electron is going to flow why the electrons are deflected downwards that is a negatively charged one why it is getting a deflected no due to the magnetic field okay so this sketches will be sufficient to explain the all effect position sensor see if magnetic field is more uh, enormous amount of value have come that is when the tab is going to come here magnetic field will be more so more electrons will be coming down so voltage will be more so i can understood that the piston has come to tdc okay so that is the explanation here so let me explain the same thing so it will be in an organized uh, manner so all element already i have told you it is a small thin flat slab this is the important thing i have uh, you have to remember this it is a semiconductor material okay so it should be able to conduct electricity okay so it is a semiconductor material it means what no when a current is passed a voltage will be developed and this one i have explained the voltage should be perpendicular see my voltage is perpendicular to both b is magnetic flow uh, uh, magnetic uh, field i is current so my, my voltage is proportional to both okay and here what will happen already i told you voltage is proportional to current as well as uh, magnetic flux density and uh, what do you mean by all effect this is very very important okay so i told you here voltage will be introduced based on what magnetic uh, field this is known as all effect my voltage depends upon the magnetic field so this is known as all effect generation of voltage that is dependent on magnetic field is known as all effect so already i have explained to you electrons having negative charge flow from left to right so this uh, magnetic flux will be acting perpendicular so what will happen there is a force this wording you have to remember okay why this uh, coming down no that force is known as lorentz force i have told you it will be coming down it is due to force but i didn't say what is the name of that force now you please uh, remember this the name of the force is lorentz force it is generated by the magnetic field because uh, in the electron flow like this perpendicular to that i am having what a magnetic field so this magnetic field will uh, produce the force that will send the electrons downwards okay now i think you will be able to understand uh, well so the lorentz force is proportional to electron velocity and magnetic flux okay so what will happen uh, it will deflect the electrons uh, downwards so electrode will be more negative than upper one so upper one we will have positively charged ions and the downer uh, we will be having uh, negatively charged electrons so what will happen there is a difference in uh, uh, emf will be generated that is a voltage will be generated so voltage depends upon what magnetic flux density so magnetic flux density increases more electrons are de uh, deflected downwards okay so for this what i can say the current should be constant so directly b is proportional to strength of magnetic flux density okay so that is determined by what position of the tap when tap is going to come here my flux density increases electrons coming down positively charged ions uh, upwards so voltage increases when the tap is going to move up air is going to come magnetic flux density will be reduced so less number of electrons will be displaced uh, down it will be less voltage drop it will give a indication that uh, we don't have a tdc we are moving towards another uh, phase okay so that uh, that's all about all effect position sensor okay so uh, you can go through this this explanation next uh, we will see temperature sensor engine temperature any doubt regarding all effect you are able to understand If you're having any doubt, you can stop and you can ask me. Anyone is online? Let us check. 
what about De daniel devraj either you come into chat box or unmute the call and tell you are on the line or not no response karthi karthik d yes sir good no doubt sir okay kevin raj see your attendance everything is getting recorded kevin raj so simply connected no response manigandan 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 kevin raj has given yes sir what about your mic unmute the call not possible kevin raj unmute the call no yes sir okay okay good kevin raj at attending the class daniel is not there what about manigandan no response simply has connected it seems manigandan no response meenakshi sundaram okay good can you unmute the call yes sir no doubt sir okay good pranay sainath yes sir <laughs> preeti preeti will be attending no, the class no, actively no. okay is the satish dinagaran absent simply connected the call so daniel satish sasvin simply connected the call sir so no sir he is uh, responding good you are attending the class no my yes, sir sir okay okay attend that class okay what about vasant no response so i am not getting the response see everything is getting recorded okay so whenever i am seeing this attendance will be going to office who and all attending the class okay vasant can you unmute the call so today by seeing this attendance will be given to the office 12 uh, people uh, have attended the class okay and uh, in between the class i will be asking you either to unmute or come to the chat box so that i can uh, check whether you are attending the class or not so wasn't my problem is there okay okay now we will uh, see temperature sensor that is temperature sensor is used for uh, measuring the engine temperature why we have to measure engine temperature see first of all uh, we will go to the electronic part uh, later first of all we will be discussing about uh, this one our uh, mechanical part why we have to measure engine temperature see based on the engine temperature only i will circulate my coolant if engine temperature is more i may do some modification i may Uh, increase the mass flow rate of coolant uh, otherwise i may optimize other parameters of engine to reduce the engine temperature if engine temperature is more no what will happen uh, engine may cease and uh, knocking may happen so lot of issues are there when engine temperature exceeds a, a particular uh, value okay so design criteria it is a design criteria so i need a input from engine temperature so for measuring engine temperature i am going to use a temperature sensor which is working based on thermistor that is thermal resistance so based on temperature it will offer a, a resistance temperature more means uh, resistance will uh, decreases okay so it will have a voltage my temperature sensor will be having a voltage that will give a indication of the temperature my output voltage decreases means it means uh, temperature increases it output voltage increases means temperature decreases so inversely proportional so you should be able to draw this uh, sketch so you can see a thermistor it is uh, mounted in housing okay this is this is the temperature sensing element this one only i am going to insert in the coolant it is going to come in contact with the coolant and it will be getting the heat from the coolant so that its temperature will be increased or it will be uh, decreased so that uh, the temperature variation will be converted into what voltage okay 
So you can see a uh, housing pipe, this and all uh, additional information. And what material uh, you should have, no? it is a semiconductor material. Semiconductor material means its resistance should vary. That is, it should respond to the temperature change. That is the electrical uh, quantities, no? resistance as well as voltage. It should be changed as per the change in temperature. So you can see uh, the resistance varies inversely with temperature. So temperature increases my resistance decreases. Okay. So now uh, you can see that is, uh, for example, minus 40 degrees Celsius, I will be having a resistance this much. Okay. Now what will happen? I am going to increase the temperature 130. My resistance decreases to this value. This is only for quantifying. That is uh, how the resistance decreases drastically when increase in the temperature. Uh, 1 lakh ohms it is coming to 70,000. Okay. So you can note down the factor. That is uh, the 1 lakh divided by 70. You can give me the factor by a factor of so and so for a corresponding uh, change in the temperature. I'm having a factor this much. Okay. So you can understand how the resistance is going to vary with the temperature. And uh, you can see there is a circuit. Okay. Here I'm having a temperature sensing or resistance and temperature uh, voltage. That is a voltage which will be going to the temperature sensor. Based on the voltage only, I'm going to get the input. Uh, that is, I'm going to predict what will be the temperature of the engine. So this one now will be connected to a reference. That is, additional resistance will be there and additional reference voltage will be there so that this one will be functioning. So I'll be knowing the voltage applied and what is the resistance given. And uh, based on the temperature, resistance RT will be developed and BT will be calculated based on this formula. To understand carefully, that is RT, it is a semiconductor material. RT will be coming based on temperature. So based on temperature, I will get RT and R and B already I know. So my BT, I will be finding it using this formula. BT is equal to V RT by R plus RT. It will be programmed there. Okay. So what will happen? This VT will be the input which will be coming out of the temperature sensor that will be going to the ECU. Okay. So it's very simple. Uh, this one uh, you can draw. This is very, very important. You draw something, put a line and write temperature sensing element, some housing. Why, why housing? No. The coolant should not uh, leak. Okay. For that only the housing is given. And here electrical connection. Since uh, this is connected to electricity, my coolant should not enter into the current path. Then it may cause short circuit. Uh, it may affect uh, the temperature sensor or incorrect reading will come. So in order to prevent that, the housing is given. Okay. So this one is temperature sensor. And next one is throttle position sensor. So this one throttle position means I am measuring the angle. Throttle is how far it is opened. Okay. So throttle position is measuring the angle. See it is uh, based on variable resistance type. Okay. Very, I, let, I will be explaining you. First of all, uh, we will see what is throttle. See, whenever uh, you are accelerating the vehicle, no, the accelerator pedal will be connected to the throttle. Okay. The accelerator pedal will be connected to the throttle. When you are giving a acceleration, increasing the acceleration, the throttle plate opening will be increased. Wide open throttle. Okay. So when the acceleration is less, then it will be what? Part throttle operation where uh, fuel economy will be uh, good. Okay. So you can see uh, throttle uh, position plays an important role. That is uh, how much quantity of air fuel mixture will be entering into the engine for delivering the power. When I am keeping the throttle position wide, you know, more quantity is uh, entering into the cylinder. So more power is uh, produced. Okay. When it is less, less amount of power is uh, coming. Okay. So now I have to understand my engine operation, whether it is going for wide open throttle, whether it is a closed throttle. So based on that only I can optimize other parameter. That is how much amount of fuel I have to supply and how much amount of coolant. Other parameters I have to uh, judge. Okay. So this throttle position sensor 
will be an additional input to ECU, that is electronic control model. So based on this sensor, it will uh, vary the parameters so that uh, what I can do, my field metering will be more precise. Based on the throttle position, the accurate uh, fuel quantity can be entering into the cylinder. Okay. Actually, this electronic engine management is what? To control electronically so that uh, for the, I can optimize my fuel injection timing, spark timing, and fuel metering. So in the first unit, in the, uh, today I have explained four parameters now. That is how to control. The four parameters can be controlled by receiving the input from the different sensor. In order to control that four parameters only, what we are doing? We are uh, getting input from different sensors. Okay. So now you can see throttle plate angular position. That is, uh, I'm going to measure throttle plate angular position. That is, uh, you can see a resistor with movable conduct. It, this one is a, a semi-circular element, okay? A semi-circular element. And uh, this sensors, we may say it is a potentiometer. Let me explain what is a potential. See, this is a potentiometer. Why the potentiometer is coming now? Uh, there will be uh, three terminals, okay? For one, voltage will be input. Another one will be ground. And uh, third one will be voltage output. This voltage output can be in the range, okay? It will be in the range. That is, I am having a battery, okay? And I am having a ground. My battery... Voltage is uh, 20, 0 to 20 volt means I will be able to, what to say, that is a variation in the voltage can be got through this terminal. Okay, I can uh, find out the variation in voltage, how far uh, this quantity for that uh, application. So that is maybe a mechanical action. For that mechanical action, the voltage will be varying. That is, I am providing a provision to vary the voltage within the limit. That is the main function of a uh, potentiometer. Okay. So you can uh, see you are having a resistor with a movable conduct. That is a, a section, a semicircular arc. Okay. It is a uh, placed. And you can see this one is a contact point. Okay. That is a, uh, this one is a contact point. That is a voltage at the contact point. So this one voltage will be proportional to the angle. That is how far. This is connected to throttle plate. This throttle plate will be what to say? It will be rotating. So it will be having an angular orientation. That angular orientation will produce a voltage. Okay. So voltage at the contact point is proportional to this angle. Thus angle will be play an important role in uh, delivering this voltage and voltage will be the in, uh, output from throttle position sensor to the ECM to understand the opening of throttle. Okay. What is the drawback here? No, that is uh, my analog to digital converter is needed. The output will be analog in order to have a digital output. That is, I need a digital output. That is, the voltage will be analog. In order to digital output, I need a converter. And I have explained, you know, potentiometer. See, here, what will happen based on this angle, my voltage will be vary. See, uh, constant voltage supply for operating this system, I will be getting a constant voltage supply. That is, say, 5 volt. Okay. But uh, my voltage for the measurable point will be varied. Why no? Depending upon my angle. If angle is large, some value will come. And if angle is small, some value is going to come. So, voltage is varied. Okay. So, other terminal is grounded. So when I'm having this type of configuration, I'll be going for potentiometer. Potentiometer give a flexibility for me to vary the voltage within the ground as well as the reference volume. So here, I can vary the voltage from 0 to 5. So based on this input, I can understand my throttle position. Okay. So you remember the word, for throttle position, we are having a potentiometer. Next, uh, we are going to the last topic for today. We are going to see knock sensor. Knock means, what do you mean by knock? That is a, a abnormal noise. When uh, combustion is not uh, 
taking place in a normal uh, desired mode that is a uh, two flame front is going to collide that is one flame front from spark plug will come another flame front due to the increased uh, compression ratio will be coming from uh, end of the cylinder wall so when two is going to collide what will happen abnormal noise a sound will come that is a ping type noise will come that will be a knock i have to prevent the knock why you know when i am not preventing my engine uh, structural components will be uh, damaged that is a uh, life of the engine will get uh, reduced so i have to prevent the knock so for preventing the knock one measure is i will be going for a fuel with a good anti knocking property that is good octane number another one is uh, i will be using a knock sensor so when i am going to predict the knock what will happen uh, i will be reacting to that uh, knock so that i will be modifying the parameter to avoid the knock that is the electronic engine control okay so i will detect the knock and i will respond to it that will be electronic engine management i am optimizing the parameter okay so how this knock sensor is going to work see i am having a this is going to work on ciso electric effect okay my knock sensor is going to work on ciso electric effect that is when i am going to compress or when i am going to apply a pressure or force in my in my ciso electric crystal what will happen it will induce a voltage okay it will produce some electricity so that output will be the indication that it has been uh, subjected to a force and the value of the voltage will be corresponding to that uh, force okay so here i can't use all the material i can use ceramic material as my fiso electric crystal you have to remember this a ceramic material will be used because ceramic uh, will be able to subject high temperature actually the knock sensor will be mounted on engine ceramic material having ability to withstand high temperature okay so fiso electric crystal element will be used what are the element uh, zirconium titanium okay and quartz okay so these are the elements i can use it as a crystal now what will happen the i am having a control main control is in ecm that is electronic control model so already i told you doing to knock a abnormal sound will come or i can say a vibration will come what i have to do is i have to give a indication to my ecm about this vibration i have to say a knock has been happened but i can't say i can't feed the vibration into my ecm i have to convert the signal from uh, that is vibration into electricity so which one i can go i can go for ciso electric effect ciso electric ever is converting a force into electricity so a crystal is placed so it will uh, take the vibration arising from the knock and it will be converting into electricity and this electricity will be an indication of the knock sensor that is a knock has been happened and that will be sent to ecu now you can see which is going to transmit the vibration to the crystal see here i am having a seismic mass okay why it is a seismic mass no when the knocking is going to happen uh, normal conditions there will be some vibration but for knocking in that frequency have to be defined okay that is a uh, i should not uh, give a input for all the undesirable sound that may be happening for due to other factors okay so what i have to do carefully i have to predict the knock i have to send the input to the ecm only about the knock okay so i am having a seismic mass so the seismic mass will transmit the vibration okay so seismic mass will take the vibration from the engine and seismic mass will transmit the vibration to the crystal element and crystal element will send the voltage based on this so vibration is coming from engine to seismic mass seismic mass to crystal and then from crystal it is converted into electricity then it will be sent as a voltage to the ecm so i have to know whether it is a combustion knock or not so for that what i have to do no this type of knock will be occurring in that uh, definite frequency only so uh, within that frequency 
if any uh, voltage increase is going to happen in this sensor then i can uh, predict the it is going to happen due to knocking only okay so this one this is the working of knock sensor okay this is very very important for examination of point of view so for this now i have explained only basic thing there is a simple explanation is given related to examination point of view when you want to know the entire functioning of knock sensor well that is you are very much interested in automotive electronics you can uh, refer bosch handbook also okay how knock sensor is going to work okay so within a uh, 10 or 15 minutes we'll be able to deliver the basic information of knock sensor for advanced detail in knock sensor if you are interested uh, to know the automotive electronics component you go through the uh, standard uh, textbook what is given in the syllabus and also bosch handbook okay so with this uh, we will uh, wind up the class okay so any doubts you can ask you are having any doubt no, no doubt, doubt sir. okay so here after uh, we'll be seeing in the next class okay tomorrow and today you are having a meeting at 2 o'clock you might have got the information in whatsapp okay that is uh, uh, yes sir so that only i am finishing the class now so that you will uh, have lunch and you will come for that uh, meeting okay so if i am taking class uh, till 2 it will be more monotonous so after 2 you have to attend that meeting also so what i am doing is i am finishing the class now and 2 uh, o'clock uh, you please attend this meeting okay everyone has shared by hod that is a loan to students for uh, training okay so please attend this and make use of it okay okay now you can go for lunch come at 2 o'clock all the staff members will be attending the meeting so your participation is uh, needed okay bye thank you sir thank you thank you sir